This is the Moto G Power 5G 2024 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. We can see a black rubber gasket around the SIM tray. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. This is the vegan leather backplate. There are 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. Here's a look at the plastic back housing. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off, so you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. The LED flash is located here, next to that is the NFC antenna, and below that is the wireless charging coil. There's also an antenna flex cable on this side, as well as one on the other side. Looking at the other side, we can see graphite film top transfer heat, additional antenna flex cable around the border, as well as some thermal paste top transfer heat on the LED flash board. There's additional graphite film over the motherboard and battery, which needs to be peeled off. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we can disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. The coaxial cables can be disconnected by just popping them off. Taking a look at the main board, we see the 50 megapixel primary camera, 
and the 2 megapixel depth and macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on top, a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is a white sticker, as well as copper tape over the shields to help transfer heat. We can see the 16 megapixel front facing camera on the other side, a proximity sensor on the top corner, and the SIM and memory card reader located underneath the graphite film and copper tape. Also, the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. In addition to the graphite film and copper tape on the back shield's top transfer heat, we see a lot of thermal paste. Once the graphite film and copper tape has been peeled back, we see a lot more thermal paste underneath on top of the RAM and processor. Here's a better look with thermal paste removed. There's some more graphite film on the speaker assembly. And here's the speaker itself. There's also some thermal paste on the speaker. Looking at the subboard, we can see a rubber gasket around the headphone jack, as well as the charger port. And the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner. To remove the battery, Motorola is still not using any pull tabs or adhesive pouches on their batteries to help you pry them off. So you're gonna have to apply some isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. This is the 5000 mAh battery. Now that the battery has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the mid frame, as well as this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the back housing, you'd have to disconnect the battery cable and pry the battery off, and then you disconnect the screen cable, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, Reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. The flex cable for the volume key is located on the side. To replace that, just peel it off. And the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is also held down with some adhesive. So for this phone, if you accidentally happen to insert the SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you would actually damage the filters over the microphone openings, since both the bottom and top microphone filters are against the frame. However, you wouldn't actually damage the microphones themselves, since those are seated above the holes. There are also two additional liquid damage indicator stickers, one located here underneath the SIM tray and one here underneath the subboard. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.